going to explore <laughs> dreams and analogy. Now, it's not merely a formal question about the relationship between dreams and analogy. In order to understand dreams, you have to learn how to play with analogies. Now, we have all gone through our schools, and while we are taught the rules of inference, scientific method, and occasionally deductive systems of logic, no one focuses on analogical thinking. It's heavily censured in our culture. It's never presented formally. But if you want to get into dream analysis and to play with dreams, you should exercise this curious kind of thinking called analogical reasoning. That's the way to proceed. That's the background. That's the way you set your mind. That's the way you prepare to deal with a dream, is analogically. So therefore, I'm going to just review for certain formal properties of analogy, and then we're going to go into a dream and play. Hi. Why, why is it heavily My uncle Louis did a study of that so far. He hasn't contributed it yet. He's still sitting on it. He's been working on it for 18 and 3 quarter years. We expect him to finish it sometime. I don't know. Well, okay. The kind of analogy we're talking about is an archetypal analogy of two ratios of four terms. Now, I'm going to explore an analogy and represent it symbolically. Now, what is a ratio? A ratio is a particularly interesting relationship within a class. Within a class. Must be within a class. Not just any two random things. Therefore, a shepherd is two. That signifies a ratio. See? A shepherd is two, his sheep. There must be a relationship between them. See? And that's a ratio of two terms. A shepherd is to his sheep as a ruler is to his subjects. Well, then in that case, we can then say, take the first term A. A is to B as C is to D. The reason we can do that is because we are saying they are two ratios. We can represent that by two dots. A is to B. And what this is saying is that there is another ratio, C is to D, and they have an intimate connection. An intimate connection as. So the properties of the first ratio, a shepherd is to a sheep, is carried over. And as you consider the way a ruler is, is to a sheep, you must ignore all references and all possible ways of understanding a ruler to his subjects except those that fit in as a shepherd is to his sheep. All others drop away. That's an analogy. It's governed by this rather curious word, as. So here we have a shepherd is to a sheep, A is to B, as C is to D. That specifies of all the ways you can relate the first two terms, and there can be many, many ways of relating them. Hey, not the same, but in a similar way, you can study all the ways in which a ruler is to his subjects, and you can find a set that is similar between the two. When you have that, then you have an analogy. There will also be a set of differences, dissimilar. You're going to ignore those. So
So that is basically our introduction to analogical thinking. This is an analogy. Again, two ratios, A is to B, C is to D, governed by the most important term, as, which established there must be a relationship between the two of similarity. Now, here's again our four terminology, A is to B is C is to D. When you then have an analogical relationship of four terms like we have here, you can then say the first term is to the third term, A is to C. You can then substitute for the word is to and use the word to. All right, then you can substitute for two and just say is. Now, I can say a shepherd is to a shepherd. That's a ratio. A shepherd is to a ruler. But I can also say, can't I, a shepherd is a ruler. When I do that, when I use that, is, when I move from is to to is, I have created a metaphor. All the symbols and images in a dream are metaphors. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Now, again, you can say a shepherd is to his sheep as a ruler is to his subjects. You can also say, can you not? that sheep are like subjects in some degree. That too fits. Therefore, we can then say, sheep are subjects, subjects are sheep. But if we use the word like, then you create what is called a simile, not a metaphor. What do you need? the word like. That generates a simile. Now the study of dreams is going to involve analogies, and metaphors, and similes. That's what it does. With one other thing, and we need another thing. Yeah. What's the difference between analogy and the metaphor and a simile? Okay. Here. A shepherd is to his sheep. That's a, rela a meaningful relationship between two terms, isn't it? It's not just ashtrays and gorillas. Mm -hmm. right? They must have a particular relationship. Would you agree with that? Yes. And you want to say that whatever the relationship is between these, whatever key relationship exists between these two, that same way of relating you are now going to find between another two set of terms. Okay, that makes the analogy. That makes the analogy, all right? Okay. As a teacher is to his, in this case, uh, students. Now, A is to B as C is to D. Would you agree I can say a shepherd is like a teacher. A teacher is like a shepherd. Okay. Okay. When I use the word like, what is it? Similar. Similar. If I say a teacher is a shepherd, I move from like to is, and therefore I'm calling it a okay. metaphor. Okay. Notice all metaphors are in principle lies. A teacher isn't. A, right? a teacher isn't a shepherd. And a shepherd is not a teacher. Have you ever seen a shepherd give a test of his true sheep? <laughs> Never. <laughs> right. So all metaphors are interesting devices, but they're all literally false, aren't they? But man is a machine. Pardon? Man is a machine. Is a metaphor. Because metaphor. Metaphor. man is not a machine. Right, okay. So what's interesting then about the analogy, just to go back over it, right? 
whatever is the key way in which shepherds ideally relate to sheep, that way of relating, we're now saying, you can then transfer over to the second set of terms and say that same way of relating we can expect will be taking place between a teacher and his students. What's the key word? Ideally. Analogy is in the realm of the ideal. Because obviously there may be some teachers who relate to their students, not like a shepherd to his sheep, but like A uh, good or, or, give, give me an idea of the worst teacher you ever had. What would you call the person, he or she? The worst teacher was like a what? A tyrant. A tyrant, right? So you could say, a shepherd is to his sheep as a teacher is to his students. But wait a minute, if you're thinking about the way in which some teachers are to students, as a tyrant may be to his subjects, now you have a different kind of analogy, don't you? Ideally. Or right. master is to slaves. Or master is to slaves. Mm -hmm. Good. Right. Now, what that means then is any time you have a simile or a metaphor, you can unpack it, take it apart, and explore it. And you can unpack it going backwards and recreate the analogy from which it was taken. All right, let's take the one we just used. Uh, a dictator, a tyrant, right? A tyrant is a shepherd. It's a very poor analogy. It's not ideal, but what would that mean? We can say in some respects there must be some relation which is going on between the two which I can transfer to my second set of terms. And when I do that, I am then unpacking it, bringing it back to the original analogy. Now there are four possible, four possible similes and four possible metaphors of any analogy. Let's do them, all right? First, all right, I can use A, B, C, D. Now look what I'm doing. I can take A is to C, a shepherd, right, a shepherd, is a teacher. I can say a teacher is a shepherd. So therefore I can go in two directions, can't I? I can go in two directions. I can go this way and I can go back again, can't I? Would you equally agree I can say Sheep are like sheep. Sheep are like students. Or how about this? Sheep are students. Students are sheep. <laughs> so therefore, would you not agree? I have generated four sets, two metaphors, two similes. Pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. Ooh, 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 ooh. Four, excuse me, four metaphors. Let's turn them into similes. We take these words out. What do we use in its place? Like. The word like. A shepherd is like a teacher. A teacher is like a shepherd. Sheep are like students. <laughs> students are like sheep. So therefore, anytime we have an analogy, we can always break it down into four possible metaphors, four possible similes. Why is that important? Because dreams deal with metaphors and similes and an analogical structure, which when expanded becomes an allegory. That's where we're going next. All right? Any questions about anything we're doing? Please holler. Just to go back over, this is an analogy of four terms. A shepherd is to his sheep as a teacher is to his students. Or we can say, can we not? A shepherd is to his sheep as a captain is to his crew, couldn't we? And we can do the same thing. A shepherd is like a captain, a captain is like a shepherd. Sheep are like cr the crew members as crew members sometimes are like sheep, can we? And we can generate, therefore, another set of four metaphors, four similes, can't we?
This is very puzzling. All right, now, when you have a four term analogy, you must learn how to expand the number of terms to generate an allegory. That's where we're going. What's our goal? To expand the analogy by adding terms to the first set and finding parallel terms in the second set. Now, I didn't put that down, I'll put it now. What are we going to do? We're going to expand the analogy by adding terms to the first ratio and finding parallel terms for the second ratio. Now, we'll do it together. Before we do it, I want to see whether I can just add one more element of distinction for you, which I think you may be seeing. Whenever you generate metaphors and similes from an analogy, you always have what are called strong and weak metaphors and similes. Strong and weak. And you'll see something curious about the way you can understand that in a moment. But first, let's go back to this. A shepherd is a teacher. Which is to you, in terms of your own experience, seems more accurate? A shepherd is a teacher or a teacher is a shepherd? A teacher is a shepherd. Teacher, right, is a shepherd. That's the strong one. And it's only in some way that you can talk about a shepherd as a teacher. Would you agree with that? And therefore, that's the weaker. You always have a strong and a weak metaphor. Too strong, too weak. Take this one. Would you agree? Sheep are students, or students are sheep. Which is stronger? Students are sheep. That's right. And the weaker? Now, what do you notice about that, putting that back in here? Can you tell me? Just notice it. It's just taking a look. Stronger. Which one is the stronger? Which way does it go? Take the terms. Call this the first term, second term, third term, fourth term. You see, would you agree we can have the first term is to the third term, or we can have the third term is to the first term. Agree? And we can put in here is or like, can't we? Which one is stronger? The one that goes to one to three, or three to one? Three to one. It's always the, what we call the inverse. It's always the inverse. Right? Going backwards is always the stronger. Always. If you set up your terms properly, it's always the stronger. All right, let's change it now from a metaphor, please, to a simile. All right, what are we going to do? Substitute for a is. And in here, what, 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 what are we going to use for a simile? Like. like. All right. Which would you say is stronger? A shepherd is like a teacher, or a teacher is like a shepherd? Hmm. Uh, and? That's right. Always. Invariable property of an archetypal analogy. OK, we'll use that. We'll use that. Now, let's do it now. Let's, let's break it apart. <clears throat> By the way, the principles of humor and tragedy can be seen in this. If you want, we can have some fun and play and show you how the principles of comedy and tragedy emerge from a four-term analogy. OK, but first, before we play, let's do this. I have my basic four terms. Shepherd is to his sheep as, what shall we use? A doctor is to his patients. Let's change it. All right, A is to B as C is to D. Now, what you must do is to expand the analogy is add terms to the first ratio 
in a particular order, in a particular order, in a particular order. As an example, as you think of a sh the way a shepherd relates to his sheep, is it likely that he may need something to help him? They always go up usually with two lions and a broken club, don't they? <laughs> a dog. A dog. Oh, now watch. Him. A shepherd then is to his dog. What else might he need if he's going up there in the mountains for a while? A staff. What else might he need? A tent? If he's going to spend a tent? tent? Might he also use a... Must he not? Must he not? Let's call them tent and supplies. Must he not also have a knowledge of Brooklyn? Yes. <laughs> yes. All shepherds must have a knowledge of Brooklyn, otherwise we'll banish them. You really must have a knowledge of the terrain. Yes. They must also have a knowledge of the sheep. And would you agree they must need one more thing, sheep? Yeah. All right. So we have expanded the ratio a shepherd is to a sheep to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven terms. Keeping the same order of these terms means that when you now must look for parallel terms for the second ratio, you must go in the same order that you established for the first set. Ideally, it should fit into some natural sequence if you can do so. So, I'll tell you what, here we do it. <clears throat> we'll put the doctor here next to the shepherd and patients here. Now, how do you get the missing terms? You must ask yourself, Curious kind of analogical questions. I'll start with one, all right? As a shepherd must use a dog to help him with his sheep, so a doctor must use something or someone to help him with his patients. Nurse? Nurse. nurse. <laughs> what, what, what? Appreciate it. What? I know. Dog and nurse, but yeah. I don't think they appreciate it. All right, look here, try it again. If a shepherd, uh, <laughs> shepherd's staffs are rather curious, aren't they? Yeah. In the old days, because they then use them to take wandering sheep and, and uh, lambs from dangerous circumstances, right? And pull them out of the way of danger and precipices and things of that nature. So, as a shepherd may use a staff, with his sheep, so a, <clears throat> a doctor may use what? Some instrument, some special instrument that will help him bring his patients out of danger. Whatever that might be. Now notice we're using this word function. <clears throat> All right, so let's try it. As a shepherd, needs a tent and supplies for his journey to protect the sheep and bring them back. So a doctor may use a office, office or medical office or a hospital or some kind of clinic, may not, right, to help his patients. Agree? All right. As a shepherd must have knowledge of the terrain in order to be able to work with his sheep, so a doctor must have knowledge of What's the difference knowledge between these two kinds of knowledge? Uh, knowledge of the knowledge, knowledge of the training, knowledge of the sheep. Oh, uh, knowledge of well, what diseases and illnesses? What's <clears throat> the illnesses and diseases and the other kinds of, of the body? Medicine. You know, in the ancient yeah, days, in the ancient days, what was curious is that no Greek physician in the classic age ever treated a patient unless he did two things. 
One is, yes, he would check the dreams, and, this, and the most important thing he would do, since most physicians in those days traveled, is that they would always make a test of the water. Always. And the only places they ever established their facilities, invariably it had to have two things, a fresh stream or a hot springs. That was just simply a constant throughout the ancient world. <clears throat> so would you agree? Our physician, we're going to say, should have knowledge of the terrain in which his patients come from. Come from. Of history. The history of the patient. Pardon? The history of the patient. The history of the background, yeah. right? Especially the environment. Right. Oh, by the way, as a shepherd must have knowledge of sheep in order to take care of the sheep, so a doctor should have knowledge of <clears throat> patient's body, anatomy, physiology, etc. I see, I see. Now what you've done is expanded a four terminology to, right, with only two ratios, you've now extended the number of terms in our two terminology to seven, haven't we? So we have two ratios with seven terms each, and for each we have a corresponding one, do we not? That functions in a similar way. Not the same way, similar way. <clears throat> right, because if it was exactly the same way that a shepherd took care of his sheep, then most doctors would take their, their patients up to the mountains, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah. And they'd get in trouble because the doctor would probably get them loaded on grass. <laughs> What are you laughing for? I'm just doing an analogy. <clears throat> that's, how you <coughs> that's how you generate comedies from an analogy. Right? You take it literally and have fun, and that's, what you, that's where comedy comes from, analogies. Okay, look here. We have expanded the number, and we found for each of our terms a corresponding term that functions in a similar but not the same way. Agree? If you ignore the similar and take it sane, you generate comedies. If you look for differences, you generate tragedies, by the way. That's the basic fundamental difference between tragedy and comedy. Maybe we'll have some fun going over that after, all right? But you can see it. All right, next. When you have an expanded analogy, such as we have now, of 14 terms and two sets or two ratios, if we add a story or a drama to it, then the analogy becomes a allegory. Let's do it. <clears throat> We're going to add a story to the first set of terms in our ratio. Now, let's see if we can make this into more fun. Let's, let's change this. Would you not agree quickly, you'll be able to give me corresponding terms, if I change my key term to a uh, king, a ruler, and his subjects? <clears throat> then you'll have to tell me, as a shepherd uses a dog to keep together his sheep from, from wandering, so a ruler may do what and use what to keep his people together. officials and boundaries and perhaps military, right? As a sh <clears throat> shepherd uses a staff, so a ruler may use what? To laws. laws, right. As a shepherd has a tent, so a ruler has a castle. castle. As a shepherd has a knowledge of the terrain, so the ruler must have a knowledge of the, the whole geography and terrain of his people, right, right, right. As a ruler must have a knowledge, pardon me, as a shepherd has knowledge of his sheep, so a ruler must have knowledge of his people, right? Okay, now, the reason we're shifting that is so we can play with it on another level. Um, let me introduce that. All right. We're going to introduce a story to the first terms, which is the first ratio, because this is a ratio of seven terms.
be kind of fun to show you how to play with uh, tragedy and comedy right now, but we're in the middle of dreams. I don't want to get out of it right now, but it's easy to do. Um, let's add a story to it. Um, I'll, I'll do it anyhow. A, a shepherd, this shepherd happens to be, oh, he's really a retired vaudeville star. And the people in town feel that they owe him something because of the many good laughs they've gotten from him. And so they don't know what to do with him, so they tell him, well, we'll make him the shepherd. And so our uh, shepherd now, being in the past a very famous vaudeville actor, <clears throat> now, uh, he's very interesting. This is our ruler. He has an a, a old vaudeville. And by the way, he has a, um, as a shepherd needs a dog with his sheep, so a ruler um, needs someone to help him in a similar way. And so we'll say the ruler has a bitch. <laughs> well, that's a female dog, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to give a name to the dog. I'll give a name Nancy. Right? <laughs> what? Excuse me. What, what, what's this laughter in the first row? <laughs> see what we're doing? We're generating a comedy. I see how you can do it. Now, what we have to do now is to go back to the shepherd and have some fun, right? So we'll call, we'll, we'll say the shepherd is our ex vaudeville and he has a dog, and the dog's name is? Nancy. <laughs> and <clears throat> would you agree for my story, uh, this dog of the shepherd's often stays up at night and howls at the moon and the stars and keeps him awake? <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm just talking about a shepherd. Um, and hey, now it's time for the shepherd to go up to the mountains and take care of his sheep. But he hears that another shepherd is going in the same direction. And his name um, is Gorby. No, Gorby is going to go. And so they have this shepherd. Our shepherd has to get through the mountain pass as soon as he can because of the winter weather is threatening. And he realizes Gorby's coming up with his own sheep and a big band of sheep. He doesn't like the dog the shepherd has, the sh Gorby has. So our shepherd has a great idea. Maybe he should get the people who are sending him up as a shepherd to design new slingshots so he can put rocks on them. Right? Kind of a secret weapon. Because when he gets up there and the mountain passes, he can get up there and bean the other sheep. <clears throat> okay? Now, when he comes back, of course, we're going to expect that the sheep are in good condition. But in order to use that sling, we have to have a lot of rocks, don't we? In order, well, we'll load them up on the black sheep, and <laughs> they are black sheep, miss. <laughs> and the white sheep, of course, are going to come back more fattened than the other, naturally enough, because all the black sheep are carrying all the load to carry up all the missiles and things of that nature. And I'm really just telling a story, am I not, about the first set of terms? But what do you do? You make connections with the second set, don't you? That's the basis of tragedy and comedy. If you go for difference, you go for comedy. If you go for, pardon me, if you go for similarities, you go in one direction, go differences in the other, and the way you weave them together is tragedy and comedy. But enough. Okay, back here. <clears throat> what do you do? You add a story or a drama. When you do that, that becomes an allegory. That means you can tell a story in one set of terms but the meaning can be found in a other set of terms. And the mind will naturally be drawn to the second set of terms, even though you don't even tell the audience or the reader or the listener that you're doing it. They'll do it, won't they? They'll fill it in. It's not logic. It's, it's, right? it's not logic. It's a natural way of seeing analogically, and you'll make the connection so long as you know the structure is analogic and you'll anticipate it. And it should all fit together, shouldn't it? It should all fit together. Good, good, good. So therefore, if you have an allegory, you can reverse it and reclaim the basic analogy from which it came. Now, dreams. Now look here, dreams of three kinds. Simple ones, which only have one scene, no action. Second. Several scenes and some action as a one-act play. <clears throat> and 
Then there are more complex dreams that have more than one act, having many scenes and different kinds of action in each scene. These are three kinds of dreams. Any, any of the three can be studied analogically. Now, what are we saying, therefore, when we say you can understand dreams analogically? Something rather curious. So before we go into a dream, I'd like to bring you into it. <clears throat> a dreamer is to the images and actions of the dream. A is to be as C is to D. There's our analogy. A dreamer is to the images and actions of the dream as the dreamer's waking world is to their parallel images and actions. The dreamer, another one, all right? A dreamer is to the images and actions of the dream as the struggles of the soul of the dreamer are to those actions and scenes and acts and drama of the soul itself. It can be either one. In other words, we can relate a dream either to a person's waking world so they can see the parallels between the images and the uh, actions and the dream and in their wake waking world. Or we can see it all as a struggle of the soul in respect to the dynamics and the struggles in, within itself. Either one, obviously both, obviously both. So a dreamer is to the images and actions of the dream as the dreamer's waking world is to those parallel images and actions found in the dream. Again, next level. The dreamer is to the image and actions of the dream as the struggles of the soul of the dreamer are to the scenes and actions and drama of the soul itself. So it can be both. Right? Okay, what does that mean? Here we go. <clears throat> Something curious. If what we're saying is true, to any degree that it's true, then there's a rather curious thing that we're going to have to develop. I'll introduce you to it, and you're going to fill out the answer for me later. That is, if the struggles of the soul of the dreamer, if the struggles of the soul of the dreamer, what's going on in the person's mind, that's what we mean by soul, if the struggles of the soul of the dreamer structure and produce the struggles in the waking world, then you can use one to understand the other. Either way, can't you? You can either use the struggles in the waking world to understand the struggles in the soul, or the, look at the struggles of the soul and see how they relate to the struggles in the world. Either way. Good. All right, now. <clears throat> Let's do it. Dreams, who's got one? Remember our rules, this is our rules. Ideally, this is what I would like. When we're talking about dreams, it's essential that you wake up as soon after you've had the dream as possible and record it. Then later, you write it down. Let me just review that for a moment, why that's terribly, terribly significant. Do it yourselves and you can see it. Do it several times, you'll never forget it. Do this. Record it as soon as you can. Later, write it out. Do not read it. Do not listen to it after you've written it down. Then, later in the day, recall the dream. 
write it out. Don't read it after you've written it out. Third, later still, recall the dream to someone else. Discuss it. And then, after you've finished, open up what you wrote about it and compare the differences between your recollection of the dream and the written account. And then turn on the recorder and listen to the differences between one, two, and three. You only have to do this a couple of times to realize how significant it is to get back to the recorded because to each level here, as you proceed one, two, and three, you lose both richness of the dream, important symbols in the dream, and especially what is called the logos, the words, the intelligence in the dream. So at this point, though, anyone have a dream that would like to explore, ideally recorded? Uh, well, it's not my dream, so it's going to be, I don't know if I'll have enough information or not. Do you have a dream? Yeah. Even one scene? You remember what we said? <laughs> okay. Yes, I have one. <laughs> so, we'll do whatever you have. We'll use okay. one way. Good. Well, you got so many hours supposed to do it there, right? No, no, no. This, is, this, is, for you. this is something you have to see again and again and again in order yeah, to appreciate how rich a dream is when it first comes. Like, there are many people in the dream game who work with people's dreams, and they may have had dreams months before, years before, and they, they don't make any distinctions between one, two, and three as we do. But since we're into, you see, we're into looking at it analogically, therefore every term, every word is going to play a significant role. Therefore, the closer you get back to that kind of material, the richer the analogy will be. Okay, good. Did you say it was your dream? Or? Pardon? Well, that's why I'm going to ask. Do you have the dream? Mm -hmm. All right, want to give it? Sure. Um, it starts out that uh, this man is... Oh, I'm very good at drawing that. Go ahead. Okay, in the dream, he's, a, he's an adult, but in the dream, he's only about seven or eight. Oh, that's equally good. <laughs> okay, and he is running. He's what? Like, running. Fast. Oh, okay, well, easy to do. Go ahead. And he's scared. Go ahead. And um, he is zapped like in something from a sci-fi sci movie. Just to, yeah. And all of a sudden, from nowhere, there's like a giant spider web that he's, he just gets caught in his arms and legs all over him. Like, but it's not soft like a, a web would be. It looks like it could even cut him or hurt him. Uh, pardon me, just, sure. for a moment. just for a moment. Um, can I assume that this isn't your dream? No, it's not. You can assume that, yes. <laughs> yeah, because it's, we're going to pull from the person who has the dream what corresponds to it in their waking world and within their own soul. Right. Do you have one of your own? I'm not very good at remembering my dreams. The only dream I remember is really old, and I probably, would, yeah, I could do it, but. Yeah, okay. Someone else then? Yeah. No, do you oh, see why? I was just curious. It's, I wanted to see what. No, no. Uh, see, the person yeah, would have to be here, and, and you'll see the kinds of questions I ask with another dream, why it requires the person who had it to be present. Right, that's what I was asking. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. Uh, that's wonderful. <laughs> what a dream. All right, another one? Yeah. All right. No. I'm very disappointed in you. What? What? Do you have one written? No, I don't. Do you have one written? No. One written? One written? One written? All right, we'll take yours. Go ahead. Third, third category. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I 
first always get when? How long ago? Oh. What day? Day? Uh, Monday the 19th, uh, in the morning. Because if we're going to relate it to what's going on in the waking world, it's important to know the day, it's as close as we can get. Right? Then we also want to see whether or not we can identify the basic issue. So keep in your mind, all right, we need a date, we got the date. All right, go ahead, please. And then we're going to look for, later find the issue. Go ahead. I remember a segment. And what I remember was I was driving up oh, good. this road in my car, and I was moving very quickly. Fast? Fast. And was in a state of mind as if I knew where I was going. Hold on. And out of nowhere, I went right into a snowbank. And it threw the car up in the air. It threw the car up in the air? Oh, good. I'm good at drawing cars up in the air. And it landed in a snowdrift. In the snowdrift. Right on top of the snowdrift and sank. Into it? Ah, oh, God, art is so wonderful. Go, go ahead. And I was going to Esalen. That's where I was racing up to. It was that clear in the beginning? Yeah. That's where I was going. Okay. And I thought, well, I'm not going to make it to Esalen. Um, and the next scene that I remember was it was like the snow had melted, and below this, below the car, I had settled, the car had settled next to another car. And the guy's car, who, it, he, who we owned, who owned the car, looked at the damage to his car, and it was very slight. Hi. Is it the car you were in that he's looking at, or the other one? His own. That's the other one? Yeah. Okay. And it was like Hold my, it. And it was like my car hit. Okay, he's looking at the damage. Go ahead. Kind of uh, grazed it. And I thought, wow, I was lucky. Um, but he didn't leave. He, he, gave, he left with the idea that he would, he could sue me even for what he what damage I had done. There was that possibility. He could sue for what? Even for the damage that was done. And he may think about doing that. But you called it slight. But it was slight, yeah. It wasn't a major damage. And I was very lucky. Is that the end? That's what I remember. OK. Whenever you do an, a dream, be very careful that the information comes only out of the dream. Like, is this in the dream? I was very lucky. Uh, it was actually earlier. Where would you put it? When I hit the snowpack on top, it was, it was like I was flying and, and it wasn't, it was lucky, I was so, it wasn't, it wasn't so bad or wasn't as bad, I guess, as I thought. Could you want to add anything more now that you reflect on it, please? Always give people sufficient time to recall it, to yeah. add to um, it. Right. Flying, uh, flying, when I hit the snowbank, it was a real shock. It was a surprise. Like, where did the snow come from? Pardon? I, I, was, I asked myself, where did the snow come from? And it, was, it was out of place. There was lots of it. Anything else? I don't recall how I, 
I just know that it was, I ran into it like it was a mountain of snow, and how I got up on top of it, I don't know, but I do know that it like yeah. pushed the car up and then I landed. Okay. <clears throat> That's all I know. In every dream, you must break it up into, see, this is separate, this is separate, so we have two scenes, don't we? Think of it as filming it. You'd film this as one, you'd film this as one. So we have two separate uh, scenes dealing with the same issue, or we have a one-act play, right? We have a one-act, and we have two scenes. <clears throat> now, stay with the first. See whether you can clearly distinguish within it the sequence. Get the sequence clear in your mind. All right? Number one, going fast, going to Esalen. Two, she knew where she was going. Three, car flipped over and hit a snowbank. It started sinking in. Four, right? Five, a reaction. Not going to make it. Now, is that the sequence in the dream? I'm puzzled about five. Is that the conclusion of this scene? Or did it come earlier? As long as it's here, that's all. <coughs> And in that sense, you're not going to make it? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So then it's really one, two, three, four. Kind of all at once. All at once, okay. Then we have four, all right? Now look here. So you have the first, second, third, fourth. When you're looking at a scene, one, two, three, four. We want to make sure for each of these that we can see an action, a state of mind, and if possible, words or thoughts. One, two, Right. So therefore, what you do then is to follow it quite simply and say, look here, as you look at the first dream, uh, pardon me, the first, uh, in this one act, the first scene, you're going to Esalen, you're going fast. What's it like going fast? Simile. What's it like going fast? Simile. Get states of mind. What is it like going fast in the dream? Okay, fine. Nothing unusual, we'll leave it. Go to the next one, all right? There you are driving, you knew where you were going. I didn't think I had any difficulties. Right, no difficulty, that's a state of mind. No difficulty, everything fine. All right. Three. That just popped right up. Popped right up. All right. Would you agree we have an action? We have a state of mind? What would be the state of mind? Well, it's, I want to make sure. It looks like we have several here. Was there any, any sense when you hit it and the car was turned over? It wasn't turned over. It kind of popped Flipped. up. Okay, popped, popped up. up and landed. Okay, right okay popped up. Upright, but yeah. as if it was on top. Okay. Just... Is the first sensation or the first sense? Like I went right into it. Good. All right. That's the action. Yeah. Is the state of mind, I was lucky, it's not as bad as I thought? Uh, well, the sensation was that I 
it was like I, ex I expected it would be a, a worse crash than I had. No. But no. that's where I mean that it wasn't oh. as bad. Okay, that's that good. I was still surviving. That's a state of mind. That's a state of mind. That's what she thinks about it. That's a state of mind. All right, good, good. And then you generate this question. In fact, it was like the, it was like landing on a pillow. It was like, it wasn't, it wasn't so much a, okay. it wasn't like a hard. Yeah, okay. Then, where did the snow come from? Yeah, it was all at once. Good. Yeah, it was a, where did this come from? That was a sense of being blocked. Yeah, because it okay. like blocked the whole road. Now, blocked access, maybe, that's what I would say. You mean must, as much as you can, you want to go for the issue. What is the issue that's going on here? Issue, another word for issue is problem, mystery, puzzle. Pardon? Well, it might, see the puzzle, the mystery, or the problem may be a block. No, I said plot. Oh, oh plot. plot, excuse me. You said issue, or the issue yes. is out of the plot. Yeah, yeah, yes. This is, the story is the plot. Okay. We're looking within the plot for the particular puzzle or mystery. Okay, that was story. Okay. All right? Okay, what does that mean? Okay. Read the myth, pardon me, <laughs> myth. I'm also <laughs> in mythology. I've got to get my right class. <clears throat> By the way, very tight relationship between mythology and dreams. But look here. Look at it as if you're filming the whole thing. Just the way we have it. All right, you're directing all of the actors. All right, you're directing all the scenes. Is there something unusual about this? Um, is there something unusual about? Curious, mystery, problem. Puzzle? Well, she has it there. She's where the snow comes from. Oh, that's one. This is called the mountain. That's one. More. More. Very fast. But that seemed to be OK. Oh, it's OK. Yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. All right. Let's go over it together. All right. Visualize it. Visualize everything in the dream. It's going very fast. It's going to Esalen. Would you agree? Uh, it's ordinary, no difficulty. She knows where she's going. Does she? Well, no. No, literally no. Thank you. Literally, literally no. no. She just going to the mountain. And That's right. Too. Huh? Mystery. Why? Look here. Why is this happening? Because she knows. She knew where she was going. And then she raises the point, hey, where did the snow come from? No anticipation, nothing. Curious. Surprise. Mystery. Surprise. Good. That's the issue. The issue is if she Is it true? Is this true? No. Thank you. Does that make it a problem? Yes. Yeah. Especially we can confirm it. Right. And that created a, literally, a block to going to? That's one. Yeah. Um, but when things are in the dream, like she said she doesn't normally drive fast, but it was OK in the, the dream that she was driving fast. I mean, what, what if things are unusual in the dream? If you look at them from conscious life, it looks weird. But in the dream, if it's not weird, like, what does that mean? It means it's a dream. <laughs> no, no, literally. That's, see? That's right. In a dream, this so somebody is. Somebody had purple hair watch. and they're walking around, but you didn't think it was In weird. the dream, the dream creates its reality to tell you a story. That's where we're going. It must use all of this material to do so. It is meaningful. That means the dream is a universe. You stay in the universe. You only concern yourself with that universe, and that's what we play with. All right. Thank you. You don't ever, didn't I, I ask you one time something about 
something similar to this, and you said, you know, it has a meaning in getting mad out of it. I mean, it, it's, it's not clear. Could you do it again? <laughs> Maybe I'm not totally clear. Okay, when you are, come back. Okay. Now. I'm going to go for the puzzle, the puzzle, the mystery. There it is. She knew where she was going, no difficulty, and suddenly this comes in, and that's the block, and you say you're lucky, it's not as bad as you thought. Um, that's an interesting statement. I was lucky it's not as bad as I thought. Where did the snow come from? First reaction is, I was lucky, not as bad as I thought. What's that like when you say that? Similarly, what is that like when I, what is it like, I was lucky, it's not as bad as I thought? It's like both ideas come at the same time, almost. It's like I recognize the snow's there, and yet I recognize that the snow is, is not as dangerous as I you could, you could anticipate if you were going as fast as I was going. It's not as dangerous as you thought. All right, good. Uh, what's this like? That surprise? Where did the snow come from? A sock? Shock. Good. A sock? Shock. A sock? A sock. <laughs> okay, a sock. Shock. Yeah, a sock would be good too. Right. Where did this it came as a shock. Shock or? Good. Good. A uh, gasp, you gasp. Gasp, okay. Uh, Let's do it now. All right, okay, All right. that's good. That's a curious state of mind, isn't it? The shock, gasp, and then, gee, you know, I'm lucky it's not as bad as I thought, or it's not as, not as bad as I thought, it's not as dangerous. Right? It's after the shock and gasp, right? You say, oh gosh, not as bad as I thought, is that right? Yeah, it's, yeah. well, it's like that it's there, and, yeah. and, and it's like... Right, it's there. What? Where did this come from? Where did this snow come yeah, from? Yeah, yeah. You get that state of mind, shock and guns? Got the state of mind? By that I mean, can you think about being in that state of mind? Can you recall that state of mind? That shock and gasp? Yeah, because I'm running in right into it and it's fearful. Somehow. I'm walking right into it and it's fearful? Well, yeah, because I, I mean, it's like I anticipate. Going into it? Hitting it, smashing it into right. it. Expected a smash. Expected to be smashed. And I was going so fast that there was no way I could get out of it. Yeah. I had to hit it. Now, we don't know yet why the symbols and the images in the dream were selected the way they were. We don't need to know that. I want to now make a step in terms of our work. And I'm going to say this is one, two, three. We're now talking about that third and fourth state. In the, uh, the, by the third, I mean that shock, gasp, right? and that was followed by, where did it come from? That's the state of mind in three and what was said at four. So, could you tell us about uh, Monday the 19th, uh, talk about the preceding day? Do you recall that state of mind? Shock, gas? Did you have that kind of state of mind preceding, preceding day?
because your dream is telling you something interesting about what you shocked, you were shocked about, that uh, you expected to be smashed. You expected to be smashed by it. You were going into it in a fearful state. Mm -hmm. um, did you go into something? Into a, uh, what was well, it? Yeah, I was working with my mother on some tickets. I'm trying to think specifically. I mean, I had several phone calls with her. Yeah. And dealing with some tickets for my brother's <coughs> birthday. We were going to visit my brother. And I had several phone calls with her trying to work out some arrangements about the tickets. And? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, Did you take some action? I took several steps in action. I, uh, I, I took, um, uh, I had to, um, maintain a certain, a certain clarity with her because she confuses things a lot, creates chaos. Go on. Did you take a stand on respect to those tickets in any way? Yeah. What kind of, did it, go ahead. When you did so, did you, uh, is any of this language applicable? I, yeah, I was fearful in, in, in the sense of uh, taking a certain stand with her. Um, because she invariably does um, attack if you take a certain stand with her. And you did? And I did. Yeah. And what did you expect might occur? And it did. That you would be? Smashed. Oh, go ahead. But it wasn't that way. This is I your mean, expectation. Expected was, to have been. I was attacked, but I wasn't smashed. Oh, hey, come on, come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was lucky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was lucky, was not as bad as I thought. Does that fit too? Mm -hmm. Well, that's rather curious, isn't it? Now, we're just staying in the first act, are we not? That's all we're doing. Oh, pardon me, the first scene of the, of the act. <coughs> now, Every image <clears throat> and idea in a dream has its parallel. So we can do this. All right. Well, I can tell you where Esalen is. Go ahead. Well, Esalen is very, uh, what I imagine to be very similar to um, the place where we're going to visit my brother. Very um, green, very lush. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but to answer my question first, though, okay? I mean, that, that's what I imagine. I don't mind. Just, uh, I'll try one. But that's not what I imagine Esalen to be. Thank you. What, what are the things that come up to your mind with the word Esalen? Thank you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I'll give some Esalen terms. Esalen is no. dream. Mindfulness. A lot of uh, good insights for me. It was good insights for you? Mm -hmm. right. So there you are going, let the term pull back, fade, let what it means come to the forefront. So therefore you were going to a place where there was mindfulness mm -hmm. and it Good place for insights, mm -hmm. All right? That's where you were. That's where you were going. Mm -hmm. All right? Everything is going along. With, you thought you knew where you were going. Yeah. Pretty confident. Mm -hmm. 
Now look here. <clears throat> Talk about snow. Snow bank. That's the word you use. Well, it was out of place. I love snow, but it, it was out of place. Well, just talk about snow. Snow, snow bank, yeah, yeah. In the dream. What was it like looking at the snow? Um, what was it like? Well, what? Was it like a mountain of snow? A, a mountain of yeah. snow. Good, good. More. It was good. lots more. of it. Yeah, lots of it. A it was a big snow drift. I mean, big snow drift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was everywhere. And it was everywhere. Right. So you couldn't avoid it. There's no way. No way you could avoid this obstacle. No. Mm -hmm. mm. There was no way she could avoid this obstacle. Now, is it possible that we mm -hmm. might get her to talk more about the snow drift and that snow everywhere? Mm -hmm. Right. Go ahead. Um, I mean, I love snow, but it was out of place. It was okay. not the place for snow. It was out of place. Out of place. What is the snow drift now? Something that shows up. What kind of thing? Uh, just use the same words. A love that is out of place. Because I remember. You take what the person says, you use their language, you go back into the dream. Right. There's plenty of love, it's all over the place. But it's out of place. Oh. Oh. What, did that, what did that do? Saying that? Well, that's, that's what my mother does, what she does. Her attack is out of place. Mm. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it's also cold. Pardon? Mm. But that was snow. Cold. That's very good. Like an, um, yes, that's very good. So what we want to do now is see if we can get that from the dream. Mm. Make sure. So you have that idea. You're making a connection. Now you want to confirm it, right? Like. Mm -hmm. So uh, talk about stone. Snow, I, when I was a kid, I, that's what I used to do is go across the golf course and just find drifts, snow yeah. drifts, and just run into them. Because yeah. that was, you know, you want to find the deepest ones because you like to land, jump, and jump into them. Mm -hmm. like sinking. Like this, brought back that image. Mm -hmm. And what happened when you did that? I liked as it, a it wasn't cold. Okay. I so, was in my so. car, though. I mean, I was in my car, so it was in the Okay. Then see, that's still possible, but we can't use it until we get confirmation from the individual who has the dream, all right? So far, the only connections we have is that it's something that she loves. She has a lot of the youthful experiences with it and getting into it and diving into it and getting involved in it. That still could sound like who? Uh, that could still sound like my relationship yeah. with my mother. Yeah, yeah. see how it's building? We draw her experience and draw it. All right, good, good. All right, you know, I, I've, had, uh, I've done enough work, so why don't you tell me how to do the second part? What am I going to do? I always do the same thing in the same way, and that's what we're doing. Here's the second part now, all right? The snow has melted significantly, and another car now appears. And we have an owner of that car looking at the damage that was done to his car as a consequence of you running into the drift. What? Good, good, good. Don't stop. But you don't have to make connections. The connections will be made by the dream. Okay. All right. Now, what are we going to look for? Three things. Action, state of mind, words. He's looking at the damage of his car. It's slight. And what's your, in the dream, please? Well, it, it's like I'm looking around, seeing that the snow was not, 
any longer there as much as it had been. Okay, so after this, the snow wasn't there. So the it white, reduced. The whiteness of the snow, and now I was making distinctions with the color. There was color now. There was okay. the ground. There now was there, color, was color, there was color. Sky. There was sky. His car. His car. Um, and my car <clears> was just kind of like just settled right next to his. Mm -hmm. Just grazed his. Oh, good. It grazed it? Yeah, just grazed it. How much? Huh? It settled next to another car, you said? That's the language? Always keep the language of the dream. Because that's the relationship between the terms. You keep the language always in your mind. All right? And he only grazed it. He's looking at the damage. Could you tell us how he looked in your dream? Any recollection at all of how he looked in the dream? Initially, he looked at it as if it was okay. You know, was no problem or no big deal. And I looked at it. I was, I just thought, yeah, I was lucky. Again, I was lucky. All right. Same term used twice. Always watch it. Good, good. And then? He walks away. It was like he, he looked at it, I looked at it, I didn't see, like I was, I felt nervous, like I felt like, did I really damage it? No. But since I grazed it, he left with the idea that, like he could really, he could attack on a, anyway. He was mm -hmm. going to attack anyway or he was going to sue. He could attack anyway, yeah. right? We'll use that language. He was indicating right? he wouldn't because it wasn't such a big deal, but he was, but he could. Oh, he could, but not likely because the damage was so slight. Right, but he wasn't, de de he wasn't really Still not definite. definite. Yeah. That's where the issue was. It wasn't definite. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was up in the air as to what he was going to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> that's right. So the car was up in the air. The same language is being used. That's right. Focus on it. <clears throat> Good. Therefore, what would you do in the dream? If you see that, that's right. You'd say, that's an interesting state of mind. Whose is it? Not mine, not yours. So, hey, talk about what's it like being... Thank you. Why would you go there just because it's the same term or because Pardon. that's what she's left with? Them. Why did you go there? Because it was funny. Cause I Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> because there's a parallel. I would do the but same thing you did. Okay. <laughs> right? I'd do the same thing you do. Okay. Up in the air. So now that tells us that expression, since it repeats itself, okay. is worth focusing on. Okay. Say, what's it like? Similarly, what's it like? That's a, clever? No. <laughs> Simple? Yes. <laughs> What's it like at that moment? Uh, he walks away. He could sue for that damage. It's slight. He may or may not do it. You're left up what? Up in the air. Which is like what in the dream? Um, well, it's like the, um, the uh, initially getting into the snowbank. It was like, we're not sure how dangerous it is or how bad it's going to be. Um, I'm left up in the air with, um, you know, what could it do to me? Okay, you're left with that as a riddle. What could he do to me? Is that right? Yeah, and it's, it's scary. <clears throat> That's the state of mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, same thing now. What did we say before? Once you get the material and you get the additional material, when someone reflects on it, you want to get as much as you can. That's why you ask them to go over the material again. Notice we got additional material. You put it back into the dream. And now what are we going to look for? What is the issue, mystery, puzzle about the second? 
First, I'll ask you. What is it? Louder? I don't know. Great. Mystery puzzle? Mystery puzzle? Mystery puzzle? Close, close, close. Why would that be mysterious? Because she has a good point. Louder. I don't see how that would be mysterious because her point is he can sue. He wouldn't, but he could. That's what she said. So that seems to be, it makes logical sense. There's no, like she, for her to be in the state of uncertainty seems to make sense because he has not said whether he will sue or not. No, close, not enough. Add to it, please. <clears throat> Stay with the words in the dream. Stay with the words in the dream. Say, uh, Miss, uh, did I get it right? What did you expect? Um, that the worst? I was expecting, I was what, expecting. what could he do to me? <clears throat> yeah. Scary, uncertain. If he did sue for according to what you're saying. Um, should be very small. What? That's right. That's the puzzle in the dream. Always look at the dream. Find the mystery of the puzzle. What did she say? What was the, that she said she expected the worst. She was yeah. uncertain what was going to do to me. She described it as being a graze. The car was just grazed. Mm -hmm. So she would be sued, but it would, the expectation that something really bad was going to happen to fit the damage to the car. Mm -hmm. The way she described it. That's right. The damage appears so slight that he may not even do anything. The mystery is why she was worried. That's right. To yeah. the degree, yes, yeah. to the degree that you see in the dream. That's right. Expecting the words. <clears throat> yes, look at the words. Oh, I'm scary. I'm certain. What could he do to me? It's going to, might be worse. What's the offense? Great. Maybe not slight. even so slight that I'm... Ah, so what am I going to do? That's right. I'm going to go for this state of mind. Pardon? Well, I never do that until I make sure about the issue. Then you'll then see how the particular images in the dream are significant. What's the puzzle and the mystery? Another word for it? The drama. The drama. That's what makes it an allegory of the soul. I go for the allegorical drama in the dream. Then we work out the parallel terms. Um, didn't you say that you to me that I don't know. Everything, things reflect on in the dream as a reflection of you. Like no. No. Well, to what extent is it our things? That remember we did that on the sheets? One to one. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see whether it turns out to be the case. All right. Okay. Back. Now, would you agree what I'm going to what am I going to do? I'm going to ask where they are recent experiences of that state of mind. All right, man, that's what we did before. That's what we'll do today. That's what we'll do tomorrow. That's what I'll do next year. All right. Could you do that for us, please? Well, Two instances, but I did uh, when I talked to my mother before I went to sleep. I had said to myself that I was going to. I had agreed to do something with her on the telephone, but I wanted to change that, and I didn't do it then out of fear, out of the worst. 
had expected that it might have done it at that time, I would have never heard the end of it. So, I didn't do it. I finally did it, but not. Oh, well, what do you mean you say you finally did it? I did it later the next day. And uh, what do you think about what you did the next day in terms of your fears? Well, I avoided dealing with her. I left a message instead. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> now look here. You see? So I don't know what the end result is. Okay. Picture now that we have a plastic sheet over this and all we're looking at are the states of mind. Mm -hmm. Would you agree the result of this dream, relating it to her everyday world, that you took a certain course of action, very different from your past, I presume? Yeah. Right? And now you're worried about what in fact you did, mm -hmm. since it was successful, and you're worried about what may happen because what could he or she do to me? Scary. Right? What's the dream telling you that you did? How serious is it? It wasn't as bad as... Not as bad? Well, it, was, it, wasn't, it didn't damage anything. Oh. It didn't do any damage. Now look here. If that's true... What are the implications if that's true in the real world? By that I mean, what if the dream dropped this message to you and now that we examine it, it's saying something about these events you went through, very significant to you, I presume. Yeah. And is it telling you something about your worries and fears? They're out of balance. They're out of balance. Is that interesting? Mm -hmm. uh, I think so. <laughs> In what way? Now you have to talk. Reality. And is the dream helping you see that? Oh, I see. Well, what do you see? Well, that it doesn't fit the reality. I'm expecting the worst, and, uh -huh. and mm -hmm. I'm not looking at actually what is going on. Oh. It's not harming, harming mm -hmm. as much as I anticipated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Now, I want to just one moment here, go back to this. Here we are. <clears throat> in the dream, there are these elements. And as you pointed out, in this particular episode, there is the man, and there are these cars. Good. Can you describe that person in any way that you can? Recall anything about him in any way? Voice, tone, manner, style, hair, clothes, anything at all? Um, oddly enough, no, but what I thought of was he looked or seemed to be like my dad. Would be like how I would imagine my dad acting hmm. or being. If so, then. Okay, if someone is not sure, you hold it, you don't push it. Next, talk about the cars, both, either. Uh, well, my car was strong. I mean, that, I think that would cause me to survive whatever I was going through. Yeah, yeah okay. I felt like that. And that was your car in the dream? I felt protected <clears throat> and strong. Okay. In, I mean, it was a strong car. Yeah, okay. Your vehicle is strong. Is that right? And his was. His was. A vehicle is strong. So that was the Vehicle. Of all the cars that his could have been used was, in the dream. Yeah, he, mine didn't get damaged. But his was because mine grazed his, and you'd expect mine to be grazed too, but. His and was yours had no well. damage whatsoever. Is that, does that add to feature? Yes. yes. Doesn't it? It adds more to the dream? Mm -hmm. Yes. Notice now, do you see how easy it is for us to talk about the dream? Because every point that she's making, you can see a correspondence mm -hmm. to her real world. Mm 
And we don't even have to argue about it, do we? You see how you do it? You just, oh yeah, yeah, that fits, yeah, that fits, that, that fits. Analogical structure of dreams. The more you play with analogies, the more then you can prepare your mind to make these connections, and you don't have to do it by any trickery or interpretation or anything else. Because once you identify the set of terms, symbols, images in a dream, you look for what may correspond to it, and then it fits, doesn't it? One to one, and you read the story as a analogical story on two levels. Now, when you get to this point, the best thing to have fun with now is to go for something that is, appears to be trivial, some minor thing in the whole dream. That we didn't even talk about. What would you say? Any images? He walked away. We didn't deal with that. Mm -hmm. We'd like to know how that is. He walked away. Mm -hmm. right. uh, driving in the car, you knew you were, where you were going. Is any particular scene there in the car that's significant to you? Uh, yeah, I was close up. It was like a close up, like I was in the driver's seat and I was like right here. I wasn't watching myself driving. It was like I was in the seat, mm -hmm. and I was close up to the wheel, and like I was driving fast, and I and it was like I had the per, the vision I had was I moving, but I'm. Uh, Like close, holding like the wheel, like the steering wheel is right in front of me, and uh, I seem to have like just like if I had turned away for a second to look to my left, and then right in front of me was a snowbank. Okay, what does that mean? For a moment, what? It was like for a moment I looked away to the left and then right in front of me was a snowbank. So you knew where you were going and then you lost that for a second and for this second. occurred. Is that what you're saying? Is that the image in the dream? We have to make sure it fits the dream. Yeah, because I remember just like like there was some green or something over on my left side. And I looked and... Okay, that's enough. That's enough. I'll show you what we'll do with that. Let us assume for the moment that the only thing we have in the dream is just one scene, no action. Here we are. She's in the car, she's describing what it's like for her to be driving. All she knows is that for a one second, as it were, she shifts. Now, you don't want to use your words, you want to use the dreamer's words always. So, what do I do? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Would you repeat what you said? What was it like in that car? You were aware of where you were going. Yeah. And then what happened? I was holding on and I looked to the left. Yeah. And I saw like some green. And then turned forward and was ran right into the room. And ran right into it. Yeah. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> uh, what do you say about what it is that's going on in this simple scene? How would you describe it? Would there be any words you'd use? Uh, 
to describe it. What's that called when you? Oh, here you are. Thinking what? I know where I'm going when I don't. Well, you well up to this point you thought uh, you knew where you yeah, were going. Yeah, I thought I knew where I was. Then going. what happened to that when you looked away for a second or so? Yeah, yeah, see? I just, I mean, I looked. That's perfectly okay. We just want this one moment. That is to say, you're focusing on the road and everything is fine. Then you look to the left for a brief period of time. You had enjoyed, in some sense, seeing the green. You turned back and suddenly, bang. Right? You hit it. What's that called? Or Distraction, distracted. Go ahead, more. Not paying attention where you're going. More, not paying attention. Not anticipating. Not looking ahead. All right, not looking ahead. Moving too fast. Moving See, too fast. Well, all we have is just this. We're trying to capture not what she thinks now, but it has to fit the dream, or we cannot use it. All right? So everything is going fine until you, you. Get that snowbank. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, notice what you said. You're not paying attention because you're not anticipating and not looking ahead to what's coming. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to Aslan, you're going to a place that's mindful and everything else, you're, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, what? In a hurry. No, it's just, it's just nice to see you. Made a connection. Yeah, yeah. Made a connection. Yeah, yeah. Made a connection, yeah. making connections. Yeah. What did she forget for a brief moment? <laughs> what? Is it a yeah, well, it's your dream. <laughs> it's like working with people who have problems. It's easy. It's theirs. <laughs> okay, so I'm not mindful. Uh, I, I don't know about that. You're saying you're not anticipating and didn't look ahead. Now, we can put this back into the dream. Because you weren't anticipating, after all, you were going to Esalen, you're going to that place, right? And not looking ahead, you ran into this obstacle. Uh, could you have. Uh, anticipated this obstacle? What are you laughing for? I'm just asking about a road and snow. Uh, I'd have paid more attention, yeah. To what? Where I was going. Oh. Should you have anticipated the snow bank? Yeah. Oh, what does that mean? means I should have anticipated my mother <laughs> a little better <laughs> than what? I was. Come on, play fair now. I thought I was doing okay. You did work, you were doing okay, but what did you forget? Um, her aces. The snowbank. Snowbank. So we can go back and forth now, can't we? We can go into the dream, we can go into the real world, back and forth. Mm -hmm. Well, then look her.
<clears throat> the struggles we have in our own soul, right? the strengths and the weaknesses that we have, sets up for us the struggles in our waking world. Our dreams then come in, and if we can use this as an example of it, then there's a correspondence then between what we experience and the difficulties and struggles in our waking world and how it relates to our dreams. But does it look like to you that if we're paying attention to the dreams in this way, that the dreams are reminding us of things that we may have overlooked? Didn't see? Well. Didn't appreciate? <laughs> yeah, maybe that is. I, yeah, I got caught up in driving fast thinking I was doing all right. <laughs> Which means, by the way, getting away from the snowbank? Well, I thought I was leaving the snowbank. <laughs> <laughs> see, we can talk about it in terms of the dream, can't we? Using the images and applies on both levels, doesn't it? So now look here. Came out of nowhere. <laughs> Just like she does. <laughs> All right, now if this is the case, look at this now. Look at this, what we can say. Going back now. <clears throat> then the dreamer is to the images and actions of the dream, as the dreamer's waking world is to those parallel images. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, and if the things in our dream are what we're not appreciating for whatever reason, yeah. ignoring, not appreciating, not seeing its significance, the dream then is a gift. If we apply our reflections upon it, to discover it and understand it. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Therefore, whatever it is that produces dreams, which we call the dream master, because it's masterful in the way in which it constructs dreams, and it's a fantastic talent because does it not mean it knows, it knows us so well that it can pick out events in our lives, represent them with metaphors, which we then try to unpack. The states of mind can be represented as similes, which we then must decipher and find their correspondence. And then in the allegory, which is what a dream is, we must look for the particular drama or story that gives it life and around which the entire drama is focused. And that's the drama of your own soul in the waking world as well as within your soul. Darn. <laughs> well, what's the darn it for, if you don't mind? Well, I just thought it was funny that it captured this particular moment when I thought I was kind of doing so well in, a, in some well, Pardon me, weren't you doing well in the dream? No. Wait a minute. Yes. Is she, how well is she doing in the dream? Well, to some degree. The pardon me, how great. well are you doing? Is she keeping the negative view? She's keeping the conclusion of the dream. No. Yeah. I mean, I ran into the snowbank. Pardon me, was there any damage to your car? No. Was there any damage to the other car? It stopped me from my drive. Uh, but it, it's all over, isn't it? And now it's yeah, green. The snow's melted, that's true. Yeah, I yeah. That I yeah, I forgot that, that part. I could continue. Is there some reason why you're <laughs> keeping the negatives going? <laughs> I see, I see. Okay. Yeah, I could continue on my way. So this evening I wanted to look at dreams in terms of analogies and allegories, and this is the way I play. Therefore, to the degree to which you play with analogies and play with metaphors and similes and allegories, I think that's the proper way to prepare yourself for understanding dreams and playing the game of watching the function of the dream master. So thank you. Thank you. Punch okay. of questions? Yes. Words, yes. Than yes. Yes. Yeah. Because there's something curious which you can really enjoy if you, if you do it several times. That we're taught to write in a certain way. Like we've been taught of a way to put the subject and where to put the verb and all of this other stuff grammatically. We've been taught that over and over. 
So part of the way in which we'll organize our material is by writing it in a certain way, and unconsciously those rules take, take over. But if you wake up in the middle of the night and just flip on a tape recorder, then out will come a different kind of image and a different kind of order, much, much, much richer. And much more personally interesting, I assure you. But that has to be seen. You have to try it several times. And, and you can then see. Uh, you've added to, you've, you then you can transcribe. You can listen to the tape and transcribe off the tape. Mm -hmm. And so also, um, mm -hmm. all, very often, yeah. states of mind you can pick up in a tape yeah. recording because you're, you're, the way in which you're recording it has a certain emotional quality, and you can pick that up as well, which may not be as, as uh, secure when you're recalling it in words. This a lot. I, I drive my car and I'm not paying attention and I'm making my, my eyes off the road. And sometimes when I come back, I go, wow, is this driving roulette or what? Uh, so there's a negative expression here. It's sort of like um, maybe, I don't, maybe I don't believe that I'm capable of driving even though I am driving. And am I because of the negativity here? Am I asking for an accident to prove that I can't drive? Or um. Tune in tonight. I know. Yeah, no, that's the real world. Yeah. Wouldn't it be interesting to find out? Then, then you'll see you'll get the drama that's associated with the allegory which around which all of the action and all the symbols and metaphors and similes take place. Is there, is there a proper way of setting it up to like yes. think about it for a few minutes? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Wake up and turn on the recording. <laughs> no, you see, you, you don't need it. You don't need anything, which is why I like this, this way of approaching. I mean, all it needs is appreciation. The more you get involved in it, the easier it is to, to remember your dreams. And the easier it is to remember your dreams, the more often you're going to turn on that machine. The more often you turn on that machine, the more you see in dreams. Once, once you start getting involved in dreams, your dreams change. Because the dream master is aware of the fact that you're paying attention to those productions and a change in the level of dreams takes place. And you can judge that for yourselves if you ever take, uh, uh, make, um, uh, say, look at dreams you've had a couple of years ago compared to the ones you're having when you're consciously doing this method. And you'll see the difference. If you're lucky enough to have that. Some yeah, people keep I've records. I've read about uh, Carl Jung's dreams, and they've always seemed so um, literate, so in intelligent. And my dreams, I've always thought, were so pedestrian. And I realize now <laughs> they're really not. I mean, if you really do go into it, you can find something out of something apparently oh, done. You're, I'm always absolutely. driving. I'm absolutely. Driving and flying. That's right. So you can get it. You really can do it. But there's another side to this. Um, uh, people who visit Europe frequently are uh, very familiar with the fact that a lot of the classic images of European life you can see all over the place in, in images and sculpting and, and uh, art forms, and walking down seven streets seven. with names. Pardon me? Seven. <laughs> there is a difference, you know, <laughs> like, um, yeah, 7-Eleven, <laughs> yeah, that is a difference. <laughs> You see, where, whatever environment you're in, your, your dream master is going to use to fabricate your dreams. And also, he had studied uh, myth for years and years since he was a kid, so. But I thought the same thing. I thought, why are his dreams so <laughs> No, what's interesting, though, if you, deal with, if you deal with a European who has one of these mythological dreams, very often, when you start looking at it the way we're looking at it, it will have a parallel very similar to the one that we found in your dream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The person in the dream who's like watching the dream who's usually me doing something, is that the dream master? Tip your hat. <laughs> if I understand what you said, are you saying uh, how should you relate to what it is that's watching the dream? That's a very profound question. Yeah. I, well, I had a yeah. dream, and um, I, when I went back and started looking, and I realized that if that was me that I was watching, yeah. then who's that that's watching? 
No. If you get that sense that you're watching the dream, then that same sense can be found in your waking world, and therefore you too are now becoming a witness of the world about you. And that's quite important, because now you have to turn around and ask, what's the watcher? All right, what is that watcher? What is it? Because he's pretty intelligent, you know, or she or it. Right? So the watcher knows immediately whatever it sees, recognizes immediately. Right? Whatever language you know, it, can, it knows immediately. Right? Ever drive down the highway and try to look at, this, at the uh, advertisements, billboards without reading them? <laughs> try that the next time you're driving. But if it, miss, it doesn't miss anything? It doesn't miss anything. You can't do it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.